What's up, MMA fans? Welcome to episode 45 of the MMA Pulse. Uh, it is October 10th, and um, sorry about last week. Uh, I got stuck in a store and couldn't get out. They locked the doors, wouldn't let me out. So this week we're going to kind of play a little catch-up on um, the the events uh, that we missed talking about. I'm also going to recap uh, UFC on FX5. Talk about a little bit of strike force, and then uh, close out the show with uh, a, a few predictions on Saturday's uh, UFC 153. Um, if you guys would like to call into the show, the the number is 410-988-6525, and our email address is MMA Pulse at MMAValor.com. And if you'd like, you can go on to Fight Fans Radio and listen to the show. If you're listening to it there, you can do the chat room. If I can figure out how to log on, I'll actually be on there, but I don't know if I can multitask and do that. Um, I guess I should bring Jared on. You there, man? Dude, you got locked in a store? Dude, I like I got the wife a, a, an iPhone, the, and like we went to go register it and get it all working, and they were like, all right, you can go now. It's all set. It'll It'll... It'll activate in like five minutes, and then we left, went to dinner, and I was like, all right, I'm coming back, and then it didn't work, so I got stuck in there for another half hour, and well, then it was 8.30. That's what happens when you go with bad cell phone companies. Shut up. Don't want to hear it. Your propaganda. <laughs> <laughs> My leftist propaganda. Your freaking propaganda. So... We missed last week. We missed talking about your favorite fighter in the whole wide world, man. Dude, what happened to uh, uh, Stipe? Man, I don't know. Struve uh, definitely had a lot better boxing than uh, than I thought he was going to have. But all I got to say is Stipe didn't – he he still would have kept fighting if the ref hadn't stepped in, even though he was taking a beating. Yeah. Um, I, w- I was really surprised with um... – the the power that that Struve showed. I mean, I, I mean, we all know he had the submissions, and we know that he's he's a gamer, and will go in there and and get all bloody and still you know pull out wins. But um, he definitely looked like he improved with his his striking and and maybe growing into his body a little bit and getting some power behind some of those punches because I didn't think he had that in him, and and he kind of shocked me there. Yeah, and if he ever figures out how to use his range, he'll be extremely uh, dangerous. Yeah, I mean, he's going to use his damn jab for once in his life. Yeah, it's like... Yeah, you, I, you... I was surprised. Yeah. It, it, uh, yeah, it was horrible. It was a bad experience. It was a bad experience. <laughs> um. So I mean that was really what I wanted to talk about with with the, the fuel card. I mean I thought overall it was a good card, but um, that really jumped out at me. I mean we were we both thought that uh, Stipe was going to win, and and um, I think Struve really put himself in in position for a, a much tougher fight. I mean Stipe was a tough fight. They were both you know on the 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 upturn, and now you know it's it's going to get tough for for Struve from here on out. Yeah, he really, uh, really, I guess, proved that he he needs to be in contention um, and and needs some tougher fights. For sure. Um, let Let's talk about um, Friday's event. Were you, Were you able to uh, to watch all of it? Or yes, sir, I was. I left work early and went and watched it at the bar. I I, I did too. <laughs> I didn't go to the bar, but I left work early. Yeah, well, I don't have fuel because Comcast sucks, so I had to go to the bar. But it's a good excuse to go to the bar. This is true. Now, you know, I mean, I think the the, the event itself kind of got overshadowed by the 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 two fights that were scrapped. But um, I mean, overall, as as in with the fighters that did participate, I, I was um, I, I think wait, like wait. Uh, you mean you mean Steven still hasn't fought. No, he. They're still waiting. Okay, just checking. All the media is wrong. They're still waiting. 
Okay, I'll keep waiting. Um, <laughs> well, let's talk about that before we actually get into the fight. So let's, let's, I was going to use that at the end, but so the first fight that got scrapped was the uh, the Dennis Hallman and uh, Tiago Tavares fight. Um, Hallman came in. Did they, they? They didn't even step on the scale. They didn't even walk up to the podium. It just they just went by the fight as if it was never happening. And then they said it something in, in the the post fight or the the the, the post um, weigh in show that that Hallman was seven pounds over and and the fight was scrapped. Uh, and that was the second time in a row that he had. Had uh had missed uh missed weight. Uh, I mean, seven pounds is fucking ridiculous. Are you there? Or did you like die? Oh. Hello, hello. <laughs> Boy, that was weird. Um, music just started playing all of a sudden for me, and I have no idea why. Um, is it just going on in your head? You could be going crazy, you know. Going crazy. I've been there. I've been there for a while. You have been. Um, but no, I, it sounds like there's some personal issues going on uh, with him, and that that's probably what led to the missed weight this time. Was he's just not focused, couldn't concentrate. Um, sounds like there's just some pure crazy that's legit crazy going on in uh, in his life. So it's one of those I don't. I don't want to harp on or make fun of because the whole situation hasn't come out. But it, right. in in my opinion, it has to be something um, fairly significant. If Dana's willing to pay him his show money, his win money, put him on a plane back home, and tell him to work it out, you know. Yeah, I mean there there was definitely something going on there, and and like you said, he 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 got his uh, show money and and I, the win money, I believe, as well, and but. They did say he was released, so uh, I mean, whether he comes back or not, you know, who knows? But um, and you know, we we all thought that that was all bizarre, and then it got really bizarre on fight day when when everybody learned that Jeremy Stevens had been arrested, and no one knew really what was going to happen. The, the UFC was adamant about the fact that he was going to be there for the fights up until the. the they the oh, the credits basically ran. They were adamant that he was going to show up and fight. Um, I mean, the whole situation was just bizarre. I mean, people were getting info from you know from Minnesota and 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 Dana White was shooting everybody down. It was it was it was just crazy the the whole thing and and it just kind of goes to this whole bizarre world that we've been living in with MMA for the last month and a half. Yeah, there's something weird with the whole Jeremy Stevens thing. Like, it's uh, there's definitely more to that story than than's been let out, and it's like somebody had a personal vendetta against him. I mean, he he'd been there and he'd been doing open workouts, he'd been doing press conference. Uh, you know, it it's like they waited till the very last minute possible to screw him. It, it just seems like it, it's not like he's a hard person to find. It's if he was really on the run. Or was really worried. I don't think he would have been showing up to a fight, and you know, had his name being out there and being promoted. You know, I, there's yeah. there's something more to that whole story that it took them. Or you know, do I, am I really supposed to believe it took them a year to find Jeremy Stevens? Right. I mean, the, what happened before? You know, with a year, whatever. But I mean. Jeremy Stevens was in Minnesota from, I believe it was Tuesday night. And then like Dana White said, he was on TV on Thursday for the weigh-ins yet. They decided to, to do it on, on the, the, the Friday morning and basically, you know, the day of the fights and the, and, and there was definitely some planning there. I mean, from what the the sheriff's department in Minnesota said was that they were informed that Stevens, who had that outstanding warrant, was in Minnesota. I would probably assume that it was from Iowa that saying that he was there, and then they got him. So it was definitely planned. But the whole thing about trying to get him on the the card and out of jail to fight when I just. I didn't get it. I didn't get what the point was with 
with uh, Dana White. It just seemed like it was, I mean, getting him out of jail is fine, but wanting to get him back so he can fight and making this big old effort and, and hubbub about going on Twitter and saying, we're going to do it. And I, I, it's just, I, I didn't get it. I didn't understand the point in it. Yeah, I think what he was trying to say is because he had went out there and said, no, Jeremy Stevens is fighting because it sounds like he was being told from Iowa, yeah, we'll, we'll agree to these terms for his release if you put up X amount of dollars as bail and agree to have him back within, you know, whatever amount of time. And then they changed it. I, I think he was trying to cover his his track so he didn't seem like he was – a liar or just feeding everybody full of BS about, you know, Stevens fighting or not. But what's the sense of, what's the point of bailing him out of jail to fight? I, I just, I mean, I, I don't, I don't get it. I, I mean, well, wasn't that fight supposed to be on the main card? No, it was on the undercard. Oh, was it? Yeah. I mean, it I mean, it was on FX or I mean on a uh, fuel, but I mean, it wasn't one of the Facebook things, but I just don't understand, like, if he did what rumors are saying that he did, that have been, I mean, no one really knows what, what happened in Iowa for it, but the rumors, I'm sure Dana White, I mean, if he even had a hint of what it was, why put him on the card and make this big thing and have him be like oh he just got out of jail and now he's fighting it just doesn't look good i just didn't understand yeah. it. it it just it was the whole thing was just weird i mean it was like if he was in jail you want to get him out that's fine businesses do that all the time if their employees get in there they they do that but then to push it so hard on the internet and to get him try to get him on the card i, I just he he was trying to keep up his rep he got his last employee out of jail and back on the card so I, Keep it street cred. Yeah. Shit. Whatever. Yeah, it's just that whole situation with Jeremy Stevens is weird. Like I said, if if it's to... what if it's what all the rumors are saying, and it was really as bad as that, that's what that's what makes me think something weird is going on there because it shouldn't have taken them almost a year or over a year to track him down, find him and arrest him is if, if it's as bad of a crime as they say it was. Right. No, I, I, I agree. I agree. I mean, it, it, if it is what rumors have it, which is there, it's, it's, there's probably some truth in what you hear, but it's not all the truth. But, um, I mean, the, the bottom line is, is he, he never got out. Um, and the last reports that I heard was that he finally got, um, um, extradited back to Iowa. And what happens next is, you know, I think he's got a court date for later in the month. Uh, other than that, who the, who the hell knows? It, it's just, <laughs> I just, it's just the, the, the MMA world right now is just, it seems to be like an alternate universe. It just seems weird. Who knows, man? MMA drama. Well, I mean, it's like every card seems to have weird shit going on i mean bellator i mean don't don't kick don't kick him in the groin kick him in the nuts but i'll axe kick him it's it's a different right it, i just i mean if that if the heavyweight between prindle and santos ever happens again i will not watch it and or whoever it put it together should be shot or diamond mma better be the main sponsor of the fight <laughs> It's just ridiculous, man. But so let, let let's get to actually some of the fights on the the FX card. Um, what did you think of? Um, I mean, the, the well, let's go. Some of the highlights that I thought that or the fighters were um, Bigfoot Silva um, de defeating um, who do you, uh, Brown, Travis Brown. And I know Brown got in, you know, injured and and, and it ended up being a, a torn hammy, which is. That's just no bueno. Uh, but I, I thought he looked good. He looked really good with his striking. Um, obviously, I, th I thought um, um, Dodson looked good, and he's now going to get the title fight. And then um, Justin Edwards really surprised me getting the submission on um, on Josh Neer. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, for me, 
Silva, I don't know. I, I can't say I was impressed. You know, I think he did good, but I think Travis Brown tearing his hamstring, you know, and now being out up to four months, which means it's a pretty significant tear. Right. Um, you know, he did that about 45 seconds or a minute into the fight, I think. Um, if you go back and watch it, it was pretty early on and he, he couldn't, he couldn't run. He couldn't throw any punches with any power. So, I mean, he was a sitting duck. The fact that he even tried to stand up and continue to fight is impressive to me. So yeah, why, why Silva won and it's, you know, good for him. I just, I can't say it's an impressive one. No, Um, I, I, I would agree. I mean, I was, I just. I'm going by the fact of, of what was said. I think after the fight, someone was saying, I don't know if it was, um, it was one of the commentators about a lot of fighters get injured in there. Um, and the other, and the opponent isn't able to, uh, to finish them off. You know, you get guys that, that break their hands and they, they, they don't throw punches or they break their, you know, like Jones screwed his elbow up. And, um, so the, the fact that, that Silva was able to, uh, to finish the fight, to me was was is a good sign and and did you see that did you see him jump on the damn cage after the uh and the, break it <laughs> did it actually break i think so it looked like it was it looked, <laughs> i would have been scared shitless if i was in that front row man because it looked yeah. like he was going the whole cage was going down yeah it was it was not pretty i think it was, uh it was graceful but <laughs> yeah i was surprised how many uh knockouts there were on the card especially from the you know dodson um even michael johnson over castillo um i thought that was uh pretty impressive um how he came back and and won that fight uh well, mike two mike fights pierce in a row too. as i say mike pierce coming back and winning the fight it was um it was a it was a good uh it was a good card overall um the ellenberger haran fight that eh. was kind of a more yeah yeah I I, I mean, it it, it kind of looked to me like it was two guys giving the the their opponent way too much respect, right? And and they just weren't. I mean, and and what was funny was because that's the way I saw it. Everyone's like Ellenberger's new, uh, new style, you know. And, and, and I was like, I don't really think that you're going to see that with every fight. It, I don't think it was like he matured from last fight to this fight, and he's a whole new fighter. Right, yeah, it's, I don't know, it's, yeah, that was just a weird fight to me. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it both of them looked really tentative, Um, I mean, with the, the Pierce and the Johnson, I mean, they were pretty much mirror images, I mean, both fighters were damn near knocked out and had the fight end, basically, and then they come out in the second round and, you know, knock their opponent out, and both of them were... Uh, you know, they, they were out cold. It wasn't like it was, it was, a uh, ref had to stop, uh, step in. They were just out eyes rolled right behind. The head. I mean, you, you saw, were you, were you able to, to see the look on Johnson's face when Castillo hit him in the first round? His eyes went cross-eyed. Yeah. That was pretty funny. God, it's so hard. His eyes went fucking cross-eyed. Yeah. That was funny. Yeah. It was like, what just happened? Yeah, that was classic. How would I get knocked down? <laughs> uh, you got hit in the head, dude. Yep. But oh yeah, overall it was a it was a it was a good card even though there was two fights that that were uh, that were missing. Um we we had to wait the whole night wondering if if someone was going to run out there in an orange jumpsuit and fight. That would have been awesome. Would have been awesome. Um so you know, going on with this whole theme of strange, let's talk a little bit about the Strike Force card that might or might not happen in, on November third. Um, I mean, we, we've talked with, we talked in the past with Frank Mir being out and and uh, Daniel Cormier still not having an opponent, but uh, the last couple days, um, Luke Rockhold um, injured and also Sarah McMahon and. As of right now, there still is no replacements, and those are pretty much like th- the the three headliners, and and no one's really saying a, a, anything other than speculation about the card, and most of it is that this just the fight card's not going to happen. What do, what are your thoughts on it? 
Man, if it happens, like, I don't, I don't know who, what, or why you would want to buy tickets to it at this point. Um, unless they're like fifty dollars for for ringside seats. Yeah, I mean, I got a, a credential application today for it, so I mean, maybe it's still going. I just don't, I just don't see how. If Showtime didn't want to put the last card on just from losing one fighter, he still had some fights on the card, and this card lost damn near everybody. I yeah, I mean, on. who's going to fight Cormier on three weeks' notice? Yeah. Um, I'm, oh. You know, who's Lorenz Larkin going to fight? I mean, the only there's only two fights that even have a matchup and it's Tim Kennedy versus Trevor Smith and Bobby Green versus Masvidal. Other than that, there's no, there's no announced fights for that card. Right. I mean, the credential came and it said strike force Cormier versus to be announced. (laughs) Hey, like, like I said on Twitter to someone, they should get, uh, Bautista versus, um, Lashley with Kimbo Slice as a guest referee and do like a, a ladder match fight to the death. And that would that would probably sell tickets. There you go. I don't know. Um, let, let, let's get into one, 153. Let's do some predictions on that so we can end the, end the show on a, on a, on a much better note than, than stupidness. Okay. All right. Let's, uh, let's just run down the, the, uh, the main card. We'll start with uh, was what is it? Uh, Damian Maya versus uh, Rick Story. Maya. Maya. Do you think you you think it'll go the distance, or you think Maya will be able to? Uh, Maya will finish him. I was thinking that he he'd end up being able to um submit him. Yeah, his his stand ups looked much much improved over his last couple fights. Um, I know Story's got some power, but I think Maya my Maya if it goes to the ground definitely wins, and I think he can. Probably outboxing. Yeah, I'm. I'm interested to see how um, my second fight at welterweight is, and we didn't really get to see a whole lot in his uh, welterweight debut. So th- this will be a good good test for him. And and uh, I mean, Rick Rick Story is no joke, but I, I think Maya wins uh, as well um, by submission. Um, so next would be Phil Davis and Wagner uh, Prada Prado. Who you got? Oh, man, this is a hard one for me, to be honest with you. Um, I'm going to go Phil Davis, though. <laughs> I think I think Davis will have to have the fight as a no contest after he gets poked in the eye. They're yes. Just gonna... Oops. And then they'll both wear goggles for their third fight. Dude, wear that, wear that mask uh, that the, the basketball players wear. The Kobe mask. Nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm going with uh, with Phil Davis in this one as well. Um, I, I think he'll actually finish the fight. I'm not sure if it's going to be by some weird submission or uh, or TKO, but I think he finishes the fight as well. Um, John Fitch versus uh, Eric Silva. They're both going to fall asleep and the fight's going to be over. <laughs> We're going to fall asleep. Uh, oh, I'm going to go with Eric Silva. All right. I'm going with Fitch on this one. So this is this is our different one right here. You're taking Silva. I'm writing this down. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, Glover Teixeira and uh, Fabio Maldonado. Teixeira. Teixeira by uh, destruction. No, that works. I think this one will be a good uh, good stand up fight though. You know, for however long it decides to to last. Yeah long but it, it'll it'll be fun while it lasts uh big nog versus uh dave herman big nog uh, i'm going herman really yeah are you high not yet okay just checking well, my my thinking here is that the older you get and big nog is like 110 that it's much tougher to knock off all that ring rust and considering he's coming off where his arm was turned the complete wrong direction. Uh, I just think that Herman's going to clip him and the fight will be over. 
Hmm. Interesting. Hey, you know. Um, all right, so you picked Stefan Bonner to beat uh, Anderson Silva? Uh, my prediction is Anderson Silva will not speak English. <laughs> do, you, do you think Silva? Oh, oh, you mean you mean who's going to win the fight? My bad. Um, Anderson Silva. Do you think he's going to finish him, though? Yes, absolutely. Me too. But I do have to say that Stefan Bonner, Forrest Griffin... Uh, commercial is pretty fucking funny. It is. That that was some good marketing there. And I and like I've I've said it a couple times. I think you put Bonner and Griffin sitting them in that couch, do a scripted uh, fifteen minute show on Fuel or FX, and it's like gold. And if you throw Sonnen in there, it's gonna be. Well, they would call him every once in a while. I yeah. Think... <laughs> I don't know. It... It'd be good. like phone a friend. <laughs> Can we phone a friend with phone phone on it? <laughs> oh, cool. Well, it looks like we've got two different ones, so we'll probably go split down the middle or something. But whatever. Word. Word. All right. Well, we'll be back back next week, unless I get locked in a store. But we'll we'll we'll, we'll try to not have that happen. Um. Make sure you guys follow um, the radio show on Twitter at the MMA Pulse. You can follow me at Josh Wood MMA. You can follow that Jared Cat at Mr. Buttons WA. Uh, make sure you follow MMA Valor and uh, Fight Fans Radio. And as always, I want to thank you guys for listening. And uh, let's get some people in the chat room next uh, next week. We'll we'll all work on that. I'll like recruit my friends and stuff. So I'll recruit mine so we actually have people. Damn it. Fine. I'm done talking to you. Bye.